What is up and welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another vlog guys. So we finally fixed the Nismo Limp Mode. The problem that's been haunting me since I've had the car, we finally fixed it and I am so, like I'm so juiced at the fact that I can literally get inside that car and just go. And not have to start it, wait for it to warm up, then drive like a second down the road and then have to shut the car off for like 10 seconds, then start it and go. Like that problem's annoying, right? And if you have the problem, you know exactly what I'm talking about. But I'm gonna show you guys in this video exactly what I did to fix the car. But before I do that, I wanna tell you a little story. So I posted on Reddit um, about a couple, no, nah, I'd say about a week ago, and I reached out to the people on that forum for help, that specific forum. And I was like, you know, if anybody has a problem, let me know. Um, I've been having this problem. I know there's tons of people out there that have the same problem, but I'm just bringing my situation uh, into the light. So then a couple of people commented and they were just like, you know, we, we don't know either. Basically just doing exactly what I did, go on Google and like search it. Like you know that they know that I did all, I literally searched the web top and bottom, right? So um, that night I went home and I cleaned everything. I went ham, right? Ended up fixing the problem. And again, I'm gonna show you guys in a couple minutes. And so then I think the night after that, the next night, I um, I went back to Reddit and I was like, you know, I fixed the problem. Um, I'm, I was so I was like, I fixed the problem. I'm gonna make a detailed video I'm instead of sitting here and typing away behind the screen. I'm gonna make a detailed video and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what I did to fix the problem. This is not. And of course, here come the haters. F your YouTube channel. You know, why can't you just tell us on here this is now? Like, I get it. I'm making you guys wait, but hate does not phase me, bro. Like bunch of keyboard warriors behind the screen. Like that does not phase me. But what I did was I just deleted the post <laughs> in my head. I was like, all right, bro, y'all can figure it out. Like if you run upon this video of me actually explaining like good for you. But other than that, you guys are on your own because here I am trying to help you guys out and you're not trying to get helped out. So is what it is. I don't know if you guys can like get who I am um, behind the screen, but I'm a very honest person and I'm just, I'm kind of like a, just kind of sort of a straightforward person. Like I say how I feel, I say what's on my mind. And like I said, I mean, that's that's them. Um, the Nismo has been sitting for a couple days actually. So this is gonna be the cold start of cold starts. And typically the problem comes on a cold start, but recently it's been getting worse. So it literally happens like without it being a cold start. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get inside the Nismo. We're gonna start it. Um, we're gonna let it warm up for like five minutes or so, five, 10 minutes. We're gonna come back and then um, I'm gonna go in and rev it for you guys. And you'll see that it's not in limp mode. So how limp mode would work is after you let the car warm up, you'll go and press the throttle and it will literally be stuck in like this slow mode world. Like it will literally be like half the throttle response. So while we wait for the Nismo to warm up a little bit, we're gonna hop in the ST and we're gonna start it and let it warm up because after we get done explaining, we're gonna take this car I'm gonna go somewhere. I don't know. That uh, that little uh, stuttering problem on start got a little better after the uh, purge valve, but it still does it. So while both cars are warming up out there, I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a little teaser for what's to come in the next vlog. You ready? <laughs> Just a teaser. So I'm still trying to figure out what exhaust setup I want to run on the Nismo. So this is, I have two packages coming. Um, I already received the first one, I'm still waiting on the second one. It's been stuck in the same city for like two days now, it's annoying. I hate how they didn't ship it in the same box, but it's all good. Um, but we're, we're in the next video, we will be figuring out what exhaust setup we will be running on the Nismo. Um, the, this package and the one that's coming is gonna be like 90% complete. Um, we just gotta figure out what we wanna do on the end. Then uh, this will all make sense in the next vlog, so just stay tuned. And I'm gonna tell you guys right now, so the exhaust setup is not gonna be like your typical exhaust system. It's not, we're definitely not going with Tome. That's like out of the question. We're not going with Motordyne, like, I don't know, I can't think of any other ones out there. Don't get me wrong, like there's nothing wrong with getting an actual exhaust for the car, but I just like being different. I like making stuff that I think sounds good and giving, get basically giving people options. Like you don't have to always go with what everybody's getting. Try to look at, you know, different options. Like for example, the ST. One of the top questions I always get is, what is your exhaust setup? It's literally just a three inch straight pipe custom bent. Literally somebody took a pipe 
a three inch pipe and bent it so that it fits underneath the car and connected it. That's literally my exhaust for the SC, a straight pipe, three inch straight pipe. So like I said, we're gonna do the exact same thing on the Nismo. We're gonna basically make something custom and I'm gonna basically just go with what I think sounds good. So stay tuned and I'm gonna give you guys options. All right, so it's been well over 10 minutes. Let's go and hop on the Nismo and I'm gonna show you guys that this lint mode problem is fixed. So I'm going to rev it. And you see there's no signs of lip mode. There's no lag throttle responses there. Oh my gosh, man, I'm so happy to fix this car. So let me go ahead and pull in the garage and uh, I'm going to explain exactly what I did to fix this car. All right, so bagging up was a bad idea because lighting is terrible. So what I did, guys, to fix this problem, and again, this is a pretty well-known problem in the VQ community because there's a lot of people that have the same problem. Um, what I did was I cleaned my throttle bodies. <laughs> that's literally what I did. That's 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 kind of sort of what put the cherry on the top, but I did do multiple things. It just wasn't all in one day. So the first thing I did to kind of try to fix this issue was I cleaned my intakes. My intakes were extremely, extremely dirty. So I cleaned both intakes. And again, there's not a lot of people who run intakes inside. I guess they call them short rams, but I call them inside the engine bay because they're typically always like down below behind the bumper because I guess that's true cold air. Um, but what I did was I cleaned my intakes first. And then with doing my intakes, I took out both mass airflow sensors and I cleaned them. I disconnected the battery because people say that you have to reset the ECU. So I disconnected the battery, um, plugged it back in and I was still having the same issues, right? So uh, I say maybe like a week or two later, I, uh, oh, so I actually before before that, sorry, I cleaned the, uh, the intakes, I cleaned the mass airflow sensor and I cleaned the throttle bodies. But what I did first time around is I just sprayed the throttle body cleaner inside. Like I didn't do nothing else prior to just spraying it inside, right? So then, um, fast forward a little bit, disconnect the battery, reconnected it, um, still didn't fix it. So about two, I'd say about two weeks later, I decided, okay, I'm gonna clean the throttle bodies again, but this time I'm actually gonna scrub them clean, right? So then what I did was I disconnected the intakes, I got a toothbrush, and I got the throttle body cleaner. I sprayed the throttle body cleaner on the toothbrush. Um, I went in there and basically was just scrubbing away. So how you wanna do it, is you want, you're wanting to lift the, they call it the butterfly doors. Um, once you take off the intake, it'll make sense. They call them butterflies. So what you do is you uh, lift the butterfly doors from the bottom and then you take your other hand and uh, you basically just hold it open and then you just take a toothbrush and you just scrub. And you'll see the toothbrush turning extremely black because it's of course dirty inside. So after doing both sides, uh, I disconnected the negative post of the battery I let it sit for maybe like 10 minutes, reconnected it, and literally I haven't seen the problem come back since. Don't get me wrong, I'm not gonna say like that's always gonna fix it because I'm pretty sure that there's other um, situations where the same code pops up, but for my issue and how I fixed it, that's basically what I did. So, started with the intakes, cleaned those, then I moved with the uh, mass airflow sensors, cleaned those, and then I went to the throttle body. So just do those steps, guys, and honestly you should be able to fix the problem and i i understand because i've had it i know how annoying that problem is so i hope this helps somebody and if you guys have the issue i'm pretty sure this helps if you guys know anybody that has the issue please share this video i don't know if the 350s have the same issue but i just i want this to reach as many people as possible man because like i said i was i was in the same boat and nobody was giving me a straight answer both on the internet and like just reaching out so i hope this really helps somebody so now after explaining that Let's go ahead and bag this car out. Let's hop in the ST and let's head out. So it honestly makes me sad that I can't show you guys, but ever since we changed the purge valve on this car, the turbo spool has gotten extremely loud. And it, just, it hurts at the fact that I don't even think the camera can pick that up. But uh, I guess I can try, let's see. If I roll the window down, it's gonna get worse because my exhaust is so loud. But like, guys, it's it got significant I can't even say the word. Signific significantly. It got significantly louder. Like, I don't even know if you guys can hear that, but it sounds insane, dude. It sounds so good. Oh my gosh. Please give me the heater, please. So this video actually made a little turn. So we're going to be heading to a rally. So we got to pick up some piping. <laughs> So that we can get some stuff welded for the new setup for the exhaust. No idea. For the mean. new exhaust setup for the Nismo. So like I told you guys, this video kind of made, kind of sort of made a turn. 
So we're back at home. We're gonna have to take the muffler off of this car. Cause like I said, I, it's all gonna make sense in the next vlog, but we have to take the muffler off in this car cause we're gonna be doing some stuff with it tomorrow. And then, like I said, you'll, you'll, you guys just find out in the next vlog. So we got the stock muffler off. But we're gonna go ahead and start it cause I forgot how it sounds without a muffler. So I'm a little interested. Yeah, go ahead. All right. So we're gonna go ahead and start it. Basically, we're just no muffler. Uh, do you have the keys? I don't have the keys. Here, you want to start it? Let's see what she sound like. You want to take it off? No, nah, just leave it in there. Yeah, see, that doesn't even sound bad. So literally, you could just do a muffler delete, and it will sound like that. Oh, well, yeah, I mean, like, add a tip, obviously. No, it's not. I warmed it up earlier, so you're good. That's that signature rasp? Yeah. yeah. That doesn't sound terrible, though. Yeah, I don't know why it does that. It has like a rev limiter on it. Yeah, it doesn't. All right, we got the exhaust off. He's about to do a pull to see how it sounds. You can literally hear all those rocks he's picking up. I'm, like, I'm guessing why that's why he didn't gas it right here because it has all these rocks. Hopefully he does a pull back. Damn, that pool was zooming. Hey, it sounds nice to be honest. It's not like too raspy or that typical VQ that's revving at the meat. It sounds pretty deep to be honest. Sounds good. That's all. Just kind of give you like, give you guys kind of like an insight. That's kind of sort of how it's gonna sound. You can't see you. Oh, that's there you go. Yeah. That's kind. That's kind of sort of how it's gonna sound. I mean, it doesn't it sound, sound bad. It might. I don't know if if the the bigger the piping, the deeper it goes. I'm not sure how that works. That's why I was telling him to make the whole exhaust three inch. It was the same exhaust setup, just his own piping, but the same design. Kind of. And the piping from somewhat. Well, we're, and then, we're saying too much. We're saying too much. Uh, yeah. I was gonna it's, say, it's you guys, so. <laughs> we're saying too much. But it, in a sense, it's gonna sound like that, just probably deeper because the sizing of the pipe's gonna be different. So, all right, we'll see. Listen. 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 